In this tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural tile material in Blender. So if you're making like an architecture scene, maybe you're making one of those like modern bathroom renders, then you could put this maybe on the floors or on the walls or something like that. Also, if you want to download the project files, they're going to be available on my Gumroad and Patreon links in the description. So before we start, I just wanted to show you the scene that I have set up. So I just have this sphere right here, and then I have a camera pointed right at it. And then I just have two lights, one here for a rim light, and then one here for the front light, just like that. And then I'm also using an HDRI to get some more realistic lighting. So if you want to use the same HDRI that I'm using, the link will be in the video description. And then one more thing, I am going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can go to Edit, and then go to Preferences. And then on the add-ons tab right here, you can type in Node Wrangler and just check mark that. Okay, let's get started now. So I'm just gonna hit on this new button and I can just call it Tile. Let's zoom in here. I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for the brick texture. So we'll just drop the brick texture right down here. And then I'm gonna press Control T and that will add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now I'm gonna plug the object up to the vector because I'm using a sphere and I wanna place this texture on a sphere. But if you have something like a floor or a wall or something, then it's probably better to UV unwrap your object and then plug the UV into the vector or just use generated, whatever you wanna do. So I can control shift and click on the brick texture now and we can see what it looks like. And right now this is uh, too detailed, too small. So on the scale here, I just wanna make the scale, uh, make the bricks bigger. And then this mortar size, that's gonna be the little uh, black areas in between the bricks. I'm gonna make this a lot smaller to something like 0 0.004, just so that it's a lot uh, thinner. Now I want this to contribute to the bump as well as the color later on, but first I'm gonna do the bump. So I'll plug this color into the normal, and then I'll press Shift A, search for a bump node, and then drop the bump node in between this, and then plug this color up to the height, and that'll convert it to data that uh, the normal can use. So now you can see it's making the mortar kind of go in and then the tiles are coming out. And now if I control shift and click back on the principle, you can see what it's doing. Now it's a little hard to see. So this base color, I will just make it a bit darker. Now you can see that bump really working. All right, so now I want this brick texture to also uh, contribute to the color. So I'm just gonna drop the color into the base color, but you can see that it's just white and black and that's kind of boring. I wanna make it kind of a gray color and a slightly blue color. So what I'll do is press Shift A, search for a color ramp, and we'll drop the color ramp right in here. And I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. And then let's change these colors. So right now I'm just gonna click on this, drag it out a little bit and I'll just make it a very slight gray blue color. So you can see right here when the light is shining on the material, it's very smooth. I wanna give it just a little bit of roughness to give it a little more variation. So I'll press Shift A. I'm gonna search for a noise texture and I'll just bring the noise texture right above this. And then the vector right here, I'm gonna plug this into the vector here. And then what I need to do is click on this bump, press Shift D to duplicate it and just drop it right in front of the other one and then I will plug this factor into the height. Now you can see this is way too strong right now, so what I'm gonna do is just bring this strength way down. I'm gonna bring this down to like a 0 0.02, so it's very small. If you click on this, you can still see it, and you will be able to see it better once we make this material more shiny. So I think just something like a 0 0.02, just something really subtle is gonna be great. Okay, now I also want this noise to contribute to the color because I want to have just a little bit of slight random color. So what I'll do is this color ramp, I'm gonna press Shift D and duplicate it, just bring it up here. And then this factor, I'm gonna plug it into this uh, new color ramp. Now I can control Shift on this color ramp and you can see what it's doing. What I wanna do is make this side of it be a very slightly blue kind of a gray color. And then this other one, I wanna be kind of a light blue but I don't want them to be super contrasted because if this is really dark, you can see that's pretty contrasty. I want them to be pretty subtle, so just something like that. Now I wanna mix these two together so that they can both contribute to the color. So I'll press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a mix RGB and I'm just gonna drop this down in the bottom one that's plugging into the base color. And then I can plug this one up to the bottom one here. Now, if I control shift and click on it, you can see what it's doing. And what I actually wanna do is this color here, I wanna change it into the factor. So I'll plug that into the factor. And what the factor does is it's telling 
on the mesh where it's going to be color one and where it's going to be color two. So color two is this material right here. And then color one is this light material. What we're going to do is make it all the way to black. And now it's really contrasty and it looks really cool. And then this here, I actually want to make this a little bit brighter now that we've made it really dark. And this also, uh, this black color also makes the mortar really dark. And I think that looks really good because it kind of makes it stand out a bit more. Uh, but this color ramp right here that the noise texture is going into, I want to make it a little bit brighter now because this black color made it so dark. So I'm just going to make it a little bit brighter. Also, I think I want to change the scale up a bit. So I'm going to make it more like 10 and that way there's just a little more detail in there. Okay, now if I control shift and click on it, you can see what it looks like. That's really starting to look cool. Um, if you want to make it a little bit more blue, you could make this a little bit more saturated, both of these colors. So if they're all the way in the center, they're not going to have any saturation, but if you move them way out, they're going to be more and more saturated. So I'm just going to make it just a tad bit more saturated. So it's just a slight, a slight bit more blue. All right, so this is looking pretty good, but um, this kind of bathroom tile is usually pretty shiny and you can see this isn't super shiny. So what I'm going to do is plug this mix into the roughness. So what I want to do now is make the mortar you can see in there. I want to make that rough because that's usually kind of a pretty rough material, but then where the tiles are, I want to make that pretty shiny so we can actually control where it's rough and where it's shiny. So I'm going to press shift a search for another color ramp and we'll drop this color color ramp right in here in between the mix and the roughness. Now, if I control shift and click on this color ramp, you can see what it's doing. Uh, what I want to do is switch these so that this one's white and then this one's black and I'll just bring it down and make it more and more contrasty. You can see this is really white, the mortar, and that means it's going to be really rough. So you can see it's not shiny at all, but the tile is really shiny. So it's reflecting that. But then right here, it's not shiny at all. It's pretty rough. But if I move over, you can see that these areas where it's darker, where the tile is darker, it's not shiny, but then where it's lighter, it is super shiny. And you could keep it like that if you wanted to, but I actually want to change it so that the tile is all the same uh, shininess, but then the mortar is still dark. So to fix this, I'm going to actually duplicate this color ramp and put it right in front of this one. And then I'll control shift and click on this. And then what I want to do is bring these two together really close. So it'll make it really contrasty. And now you can see that there's only two colors. There's the mortar and then there's the uh, brick. And you can see now that we've changed these colors and made it super contrasty. If I control shift and click back on this, you can see now it's doing the opposite effect. So the mortar is really uh, shiny and then uh, the brick is not shiny at all. So we actually want to switch these. So just bring this one down here, the black one over here, and then the white one over here. And now you can see it's again much more shiny and the mortar is really black. Now, right now, this is pretty much like a mirror. It's like super, super shiny. So to make this less shiny, a little more rough, this black color, I'm just going to turn it up. And the more you turn it up, the uh, less shiny it's going to get because when it's fully white, it's uh, not shiny at all. And when it's fully dark, it's super shiny. So you can just take this black color, just drag it up a bit. And it, you can see now it's really not shiny, but I want it to be pretty shiny. So I'll just drag it to somewhere that looks good. I think that looks pretty good. That's maybe a little too shiny. So I'll just make it a little bit more rough. And now you can see if I move down here, even where there's the darker tiles, they're the same amount of shininess as the lighter tiles. So there we go. That's the material. I'm going to press F12 to render this out. And then once it's done rendering, we're going to add a denoise node just to smooth out the noise and make it look a little bit nicer. And I really like how if you zoom in here, you can see the edges of the tile. It's reflecting a little bit of light right there. I really like that. It kind of makes it stand out and look cooler. Okay, so the render is finished now. You can also see that um, that little bit of noise that we added, you're really able to see that. If you think it's too strong, you could uh, right here. If I control shift and click, go back here. This one right here, you could make it less strong, like even a 0 0.01 if you want. I'm just going to leave it at 0 0.02, but you could make it less strong if you wanted. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the compositing tab and you can see you're going to need to hit uh, use nodes and then you can see your composite and your render layers. Now to preview this, I'm going to uh, control shift and click on the render layers and now you should be able to see it behind you. And if you don't see the render behind you, you can click on the backdrop and that'll uh, show it. And then if it's too big or too small, you can press V to zoom it out and Alt V to zoom it in. All right, so now let's add that denoise. So I'll press shift A 
just search for a denoise node, drop it in between the render layers and composite, and then I can control shift and click on the denoise. So right now the background is transparent because I rendered it out as a transparent background. You can see the film right here. I just render that out as transparent. So if you did that and you wanna add some kind of color in the background, you can press shift A, search for an alpha overnode, drop the alpha overnode right in there. And then this one's actually gonna to need to go into the bottom one and the top one, that's gonna be whatever background you wanna have it. So I wanna have a maybe really dark blue color. Okay, and then to save this image, what I'm gonna do is go back to this rendering tab. And then right here, this is the render result. So it's what rendered, but this doesn't have all the compositing that we did. So I'm gonna click right here then click on the viewer node and now we can see the finished image. So now I'm gonna go right here and go to image and click on save as. So there we go, that's the finished procedural tile material. Again, if you wanna support me and also download the project files, this is gonna be available on my Gumroad and Patreon. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching and I will see you in a future video.